Hey parents and KFC children, now we are in exciting times. Come November 8, we are going to restart KFC on site. That means we are able to gather physically again in the church. Now, by now, you would have received the WhatsApp uh, uh, information on how you can come back to join us physically in the church. Now, you need to register your children if you're keen to come back, all right? Unfortunately, you cannot walk in on the Sunday itself because you'll be turned away, okay? So you need to pre-register your children and then come on that day itself. Now, follow the instructions of the service team. They will be taking your temperature when you are at level one and then directing your children uh, to the various halls. If you are three years old or nursery and kindy, you'll be directed to the kindy hall in the basement. Okay, so that's where you're going to have your children's program. And then if you are primary one to primary six, you are coming up to level two, back to hall two. Okay, so children's church is going to restart on the 8th of November. We can take a maximum of up to 45 children per age group. Now, when you come back on that day, you need to be wearing your mask. You will need to still do all the safe distancing uh, that is required by law. Okay, but we are still going to have some games. We are still able to play games. So we're going to have games. We're going to have worship and teach in. All right. Now, worship will be online. You're going to be watching a recorded worship and your teach in could either be online or we will have one of the teachers give you a big group teaching. Okay, so that is what is going to happen for the program. It's going to run concurrently with the adult service. And this will happen on the 8th of November at 11 a.m. only. Okay, there is no KFC for the 8.30 service. So take note, and if you are ready to come back and join us physically on site, then quickly register for it. Okay, now for those of you who do not want to come back or you're not ready to come back or you did not manage to get a ticket to come back do not worry zoom lessons with your teachers still continues weekly okay so your teachers will continue to inform your parents or inform you of your zoom classes so you need to log on and be part of that all right so the only new thing that is happening is we are coming back together to meet on site but other than that, Zoom lessons and all that will still continue. And this will continue all the way till the end of this year and most likely into the new year. Okay, now get to your teachers if you have questions. But other than that, we'll see you. Bye. Hi children, welcome to worship. Okay, now let's all stand up and let's pray. All eyes close, heads bow. Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you for giving us this time that we're able to worship you. And I pray even as we worship you right now, will there not be any distractions around us, Lord? We're able to worship you in spirit and truth fully. And I pray, Lord, will you be in the midst and that, Lord, will we fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go. <laughs>
such a good God, Lord. Lord, that you are so good to us. And it's so good to know that no matter where we go, Lord, you are always, always there for us. Lord, we know that you are faithful through it all. And I pray even as we continue to worship you, will we always remind ourselves that, Lord, you are so good and so faithful. Lord, everything that we have, everything that will be, Lord, is a gift to you. And every song that we sing and every praise that we bring, Lord, is for you. And I also pray, Lord, that will you open up our eyes and open up our hearts to be able to see who you really are. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for being so faithful and so good to us. And I pray that every song that we sing and every praise that we bring will be a gift to you. And I also pray, Lord, that even as we continue to know you better, Lord, we open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we're able to see you. I also pray for class time right now, for lesson later, Lord, that will you in the midst of us and will not be distracted by the things around us, but we're able to focus on you. Just name, Amen. Hi children, welcome back to KFC. Now this weekend is a special weekend because we are celebrating our church anniversary. Now that means it is simply like our church birthday. Okay, 34 years ago, that's a long time. Many of you were not born then. Uh, on this weekend, uh, the first weekend of November, we had our very first service in this building. Now, now, you may be wondering, how did BBTC then come about? Now, let me show you some photos that will give you an idea of how we started a long, long time ago. Now, this was how it all started. It started with a tuition program uh, in one of the areas in Bedok. And because they needed a space, there was this group of people, this gentleman here, that decided that let's build a church. Let's have a proper building where we can have all the different kind of programs to serve the people in the community. So they look for a land and they found this empty land, which is now where our church stands. And they bought the land and then one day we managed to have it built. Okay, now this was how it used to be when we had our programs. Notice it is all in the grass patch. So there was a children's program, but it was still on that empty land. All right. Now, members, church members donated money. And with that money, we had our first church building, which is this part here that you see, which is now where Hall 2 is, actually. All right. And then later, our church grew. Then we realized that that building there was not enough for the members. It was not enough for our activities. Then we decided that on this side of the church, we are going to build another building. Now, this used to be a car park and an open space. And it's actually a basketball court, an open air basketball court. All right. So for those of you who are very, very much older, you will actually know that because you have been playing your basketball uh, there when it was an open space. Okay, so they got rid of the basketball court and it became another building. Now, this is what we look like today. Okay, but it was over many, many years. Okay, so this is the very first building that came about. And then subsequently, we added this one and along with that, our HQ. All right, so this is what BBTC is all about. Now, the question then is, is then the church a building, a small building, a big building, and a huge building? Then what then is the church? Now, let's look at what the Bible says, okay? Now, the church is a building. That is true. But at the same time, the Bible says that the building is uh, where people can come to worship God and learn more about God. So the church is not just about a building, but it is a place. And then as we go into the Bible, we can see that the church is actually the people. Okay, so let's look at how the Bible describes the church. There are a few words that the Bible uses to describe the church. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, all right, it says this. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. And you are members of God's family. So the first word we learn here that, that describes the church is it is God's family. So this one is slightly different from the family that you have at home, your father and your mother. But this is the God's family. So it is together with the other Christians that are in the church here. So if you are in BBTC, 
when you have your other Christian friends, they are your family. They are your Christian family. Okay? And we all belong to God's family. Right? So that's the first word. Now let's look again into Ephesians. We will go down to verse 20. It says this, Together we are His house. His here means Christ. Okay? It means Jesus. And we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus Himself. So the second word that you learn here that describes the church is it is actually a building okay a physical building all right so your first word is it is a family is god's family your second word is it is a building now let's look again uh, this one in ephesians chapter 5 okay it describes that first thing christ loves the church all right and the church is not just a physical building, but it is made up of people, all right? People who believe in God, people who come together to learn about God, to worship God. That is the church. So it says here that Christ loves the church, okay? And he has a, a purpose for the church, okay? And the purpose is this, to make her holy and clean. Holy and clean, it describes further. That means it is without blemish. There is no stain. It is pure. All right? And when, they, when the church is pure and without blemish, the church then becomes this glorious church. So it's fantastic. When you look at it, it's like a wow. All right? It's not a ew. If you see something dirty, you go like ew, yucks. Right? And you stay away. But this is the opposite of it. It is a glorious church. It's beautiful. It is bright. It is clean. It is holy. Okay? So this is what the church would be. And here, it is described as the bride. Alright? So when you look at the bride, she is all pretty. She's most of the time in white. And her dress, her gown is all clean right it's not dirty or stained in any way so this is the equivalent of what the church would be like okay if you go into revelations you can actually learn more about this okay so you've got your three words that describes the church it is god's family it is a building and now it is described as a bride okay so then one more word okay it says this in ephesians chapter 1 that the church is the body of Christ Okay? The church is the body of Christ Now, if you think of body You will think of many different parts I've got the picture there That cute little boy and all the different parts of his body Okay? Hold on to that thought We will learn more about it as we go Now here, the word is It is a body all right, so when you have a body, you need a head. Can you guess who then is the head? All right, let's look then. So who then builds the church? If it's a physical building, you will have the contractors that will come in that does the building. But what if we are talking about the people? Remember we said that the church is the people of God coming together? Then who then builds the church? This is where it is, alright? So in Matthew chapter 16, it says this. This is, Peter, uh, this is Jesus talking to Peter, okay? So this is his, uh, what Jesus said. Here is what I tell you. You are Peter. Remember he's talking to Simon Peter. Eh? And on this rock, I, which is Jesus, because it's Jesus talking, will build my church. So it is Jesus that will build the church. Okay? Now let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. This is what it says. And he, if you read Colossians chapter 1, uh, from verse 15 onwards, it talks all about uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is a continuation of it. So it says, and he, which is Jesus Christ, right, is the head of the body. Remember? We said that, okay? So Christ is the head, which is the church. Alright? He is the beginning. He is the first to be raised from the dead. 
that happened so that he would be far above everything. Okay? So, Jesus is the one that will build the church. Jesus is the head of the church. Now, what then is the purpose of the church, you may ask? Is it for us to all come together, be very happy to meet each other, play, uh, have a party, have food parties, and then we all go home? No. Let's look at what the Bible says, okay? There is a purpose for the church. Now, one, we need to grow. So we're not supposed to always stay the same, stay the same small. And then if we are, what the Bible says, we are babies, that means when we know very little about God and we stay that way. But when we say grow, it means we grow in numbers, we grow in our knowledge of God, we grow in our love for God. So that is what the church is about, okay? Then it's to fulfill God's purpose. So there is a reason why the church is here. There is a reason why we have this physical building here in Bado area. There is a reason why each one of you is in KFC. Okay, so there is a purpose for you. There is something that God wants you to do. All right, you are not just here to occupy a space. You're not just here to enjoy the nice aircon, to enjoy the good church facilities. But there is something God wants you to do. Okay, now let's look at the third one. Then it is for God's glory. That means when we do all these things, when we do what God wants us to do, people are going to see and they're going to know, ah, this is BBTC. It is a good church because it helps people. There is something about the God in that church because when we pray, that God answers us. So this is what it means for God's glory, that at the end of the day, people will know about God. People will know about the power of God. People will know about what God can do, how real He is. So it's not about us. It's not about how clever we are. It's not about how beautiful our building is. But it is about the God who is in this place. Alright? Okay, so that is the purpose of the church. Now, let's look at a bit further. Now, if you are the body, if you are part of this church, and there is something that God wants you to do, what then do you think it is? Okay, I've got that picture there of the boy and all the different parts of his body. That gives you a clue. Have a think. What do you think you can do? And I'm not asking you this question when you are very much older, or when you are like my age, or when you are in your 20s. But now, as a KFC child, now when you are in primary school, what do you think you can do? How can you fulfill God's purpose for you? God has placed you here in BBTC, here in KFC, for a reason. This building is here in the Bado area for a reason and for a purpose. There's a reason why we are not in Tampines. There's a reason why we are not in Pasiris or even in Jurong, so far away. But we are here for a purpose. So then, what do you think is your part in this? Okay, now let me give you a clue. You have hands. Remember we talked about your body, right? So in your body, there are different parts. And physically, uh, your different parts do different things. You're not exactly going to walk on your hands, right? That's not what you, your hands are for. But you stand on your two legs, you walk on your feet. Your legs are the ones that carry you. When you want to talk, you don't use your ear to talk be quite weird, right? Your ears start moving and sounds start. That's not the function of the ear. But the ear is for listening and speaking is from your mouth, your words, right? So with the different parts of your body, there's different function. It is the same with each one of us. When we are together, we all play the different roles. Let me explain to you, okay? So some of us may be like the hands, okay? If you can play uh, an instrument like some of you may know uh, Valerie Tete right one of our sirens she can play the piano 
So if you can play the instrument, a musical instrument, then that is your way of doing something. Okay, the big, big word is to serve or to give. Some of you are very good at welcoming people. Hi, friend, how are you? I didn't see you for a long time. Are you well? That is a form of service. Not everybody can do that. Okay, some people don't even like to do that. All right, then you may be what uh, some people call an usher. You like to help people, show people the way. They may be new to the church, they may be new to KFC, and you would help them along. Hey, the toilet is way over the other side. This is our hall, this is where we meet, this is where we have our worship. You are the usher. All right, okay, getting the idea? All right, let's look. What if you are like the feet, the legs, the legs, okay? You may not be the one in front, doing the talking, doing the leading, but you could be behind supporting and helping others. Okay, so you could be like that silent helper. Your sirens may be up in front on the stage leading a game. You could be the one helping to get the game items ready. At the end of the games, you could be the one helping to keep the items. That is you. That is your role. All right? So there is nothing uh, shameful or nothing small about that role. So even roles like the cleaners, they go around every week, they go around every day, they remove the rubbish and sometimes the rubbish really, really stings. It's bad, okay? But they do it and it's part of it. It keeps the church going, it keeps the church clean. All right, so that's another role. What about your mouth? Hmm, what comes out from your mouth? Are they words that encourages your friends? Or do you call your friends names? Do you call your friend bad names? Do you call them silly? Do you call them stupid? That's not what you're supposed to be doing with your mouth, okay? It should be words of encouragement that should come forth, all right? You should be using your mouth to share the gospel with those who do not know. All right? What about praying for your friend? You are in KFC. You have been taught to pray. Most of you would know how to pray. So are you making use of the opportunity to pray for your friends? If they are not well, if they are worried, they are scared, do you pray for them? Or do you laugh at them instead? Ah, you scary cat! Okay, so think about it. Getting the idea of what you can do? Okay, your feet. There is a verse in the Bible that says, How beautiful it is for those who bring good news, the feet of those who bring good news. Alright, and good news we know is the gospel. So that verse says that it is such, such, such a beautiful thing. If somebody was to just go tell another person about the gospel. Alright, so are you doing that with your feet? Or are you using your feet to kick your friend? Or kick your brother or sister? Okay, so what are you doing with your feet? Where is it taking you? Is it taking you to places that you shouldn't go? And causing you to do things that you shouldn't be doing? Okay? Now, let's look at the boy. Something is going to appear on him. <sighs> the heart. What about your heart? When I tell you heart, what comes to your mind? Love, right? So are you showing love to people around you? If you're not, then why not? Then if you are thinking, okay, I should be showing love, how? What can I do to show love? This is a great time to show love to people around you. Okay, we are in this whole COVID season. Some people are not doing well. They are staying home a lot of time and they don't have a choice. They need to stay home and they're not doing well staying home. Okay, they are feeling scared. They are feeling bored. They feel like they're going crazy. Then how can you show love 
to these people. Some of these could be even your friends because you can't really be meeting your friends. You can't be running around all over the place. Uh, at one time, you all had your home-based learning and that was tough for some of them, right? So how then can you show love? Okay, so think about this. These are some ideas. You can continue to discuss this with your parents as to how then can you show love? How then can you do things to show that you are part of God's family? How then can you show that, hey, we are all in this together? All right, so this, all these things that you do doesn't need to be just for your KFC friends. It can also be for the people in your school. All right, even some who are at home, some of you may have your grandparents with you and they may not be Christians yet. And if you have grandparents with you, this could be a time where you really, really talk to them and show love to them because they could be having a hard time because they're elderly and the elderly is supposed to stay at home, right? And not go out so often. So for some of them, that is very, very difficult. All right, so they may be feeling lonely, they may be feeling very bored, and they could really think that they are going crazy. So then what can you do to show that you care for them, you love them? All right, now what else? What about your other friends in KFC? You haven't been seeing them now because we are all uh, on Zoom. We haven't come together physically, but you are meeting them on Zoom. So are you talking to them? Are you saying hi to them? Are you praying for them even during the week when you're not seeing them? Okay, so think about it. What else? What else can you do? What other places or situations is it can you show that you are God's child? Can you show God's love to the people? All right, now, this is your memory verse for this week. It comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. And it says this, Let us consider, consider means let us think, okay? Let us think how we can stir up one another to love. Stir up means how we can encourage, how we can motivate, how can we can get people excited about it, okay? And it's towards one another and it's towards love. Alright, so it's not to get your friends to, hey, let's go and kick this other boy there and trip him and cause him to fall, okay? It's not that, nah. It is towards love and it's good works that we are looking at. Then it says this, the next line says this, let us help one another to do good works. Alright, okay, verse 25 says this, and let us not give up meeting together, so KFC is going to restart soon. For those of you who are ready, you can come back. We will be meeting physically. We'll be meeting together again. But for those who can't, still continue to meet on Zoom. Okay, that is a form of meeting together. All right. Now, then it says this, we do not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing this. That means some people have not been logging into their Zoom classes. We have not seen them for the longest time. Okay, don't do that. That's what it's saying. Okay, instead, let us encourage one another with words of hope. So times are tough. And our government says it's going to continue to be like that even into the new year. Okay, they have already told us, don't think that it will go back to what it was before. It's not going to be that way. This is what it's going to be like when we go into the new year. So there'll be restrictions. I guess we got to continue to wear masks. We got to meet in small groups. We can't have big parties. We can't have big celebrations. So then how do we tell people, hey, it's okay. We are going to get through this together. We, we encourage one another with words of hope. That means we tell them, look, it's not the end of the world. True, things are going to be tough, things are going to be different, but it is not the end of the world. You don't need to feel that, oh, I can't make it, I'm going to die. Okay, it's not the end of the world, right? We can get through this together. 
Let us encourage one another with words of hope. And the last line says, let us do this even more. So it says, don't just stop. We need to continue to do and continue to do even more. Why? As we see the day approaching, that means Christ is going to come again. We know that, right? So all the more we need to hang on. We need to hang on in our faith. We do not give up. All right, so this is Hebrews 10, 24, 25, your memory verse for this week. So children, as you celebrate uh, this anniversary, this weekend, as you think about how beautiful BBTC is, how blessed you are to have a big hall where we can have our KFC, our children's church, how beautiful our church is, think about why we are here Think about how you can be a blessing to the people around you. Okay? Remember God's purpose for us. There is a purpose why we are here. There is why there is a purpose why we are called the church. And the church is made up of God's people. Okay? Alright. Let's pray as we close this lesson. So dear God, we thank you that indeed you are a good God. You have blessed us. You have given us so much. And BBTC is so beautiful. And we have so many good things in this church. So we thank you for placing us here in BBTC. And we ask that you help us to be first of all grateful and to understand and know what is our role. What is the thing that you want us to do? For you have blessed us not just so that we can enjoy the blessings, but you want us to be a blessing to other people at the same time. So Lord, I ask that you give each and every one of the children here uh, an understanding and a clarity of what they can do to be a blessing to others. So we thank you for watching over us. We thank you for watching over BBTC. And may you continue to use this church, use each one of us, to bring you glory in jesus name amen all right children so that's the end of today's lesson continue to be safe continue to wear your mask and we'll see you again next week bye